So please make sure to do that if you're a guest and if you are listening to our show, <laughs> you probably just uh, need to look into your girevan and make sure if you haven't been a burden on somebody. But guests are not burdened, ladies Definitely. and gentlemen, and uh, people are always hospitable. And this is something which we are, which we have been taught by our parents as well. So please make sure that you're kind to your guests. But here's the thing, Shazad. So uh, moving away from the topic of guests, generally yeah. speaking. Uh, there are certain reasons if someone's words probably, if someone's behavior probably, their expression towards you can sort of make you feel, um, I don't know how to, can bring about a negative energy in you. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like it is beyond your control to actually, uh, well, manage those energies that you receive and then you give out as well. Yeah. Sometimes you sort of start hating on yourself for being so negative, but you cannot find a way uh, or a path. You cannot just find that light at the end of the tunnel to be positive for that matter. So I think it's very easy for people to come around and say, hey, hosla karo, theek ho jayega, or be positive. But I feel like it's really hard to actually adopt that mentality, it is. isn't you it? Know, uh, you know, certainly people who are actually <coughs> Suffering or going through a difficult situation, ladies and gentlemen, somebody going up to them and be like, hey, you, know, you know, somebody who actually just got off a Mercedes, lives in a two canal house, going to a person who does not have money to pay rent uh, and telling them, hey, you know what, they do not buy it. And uh, whenever you're in a situation which is full of distress, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard for you to kind of contemplate on things or, you know, to move forward. So, you know, you really need that support system which we will come down to in a bit as well, how to stay positive. That's what we'll be talking about today. But before we do that, ladies hmm. and gentlemen, we have a rich tribute to share. And it's because of the fact that today happens to be the death anniversary of Dr. Lama Muhammad Akbal, uh, who's a visionary uh, behind getting us this uh, sovereign land, ladies and gentlemen, uh, where we live freely, where we are free to go to our uh, uh, you know, churches, where we are free to go to our mosques, where we are free to do whatever we want to do. And uh, to be very honest, ladies and gentlemen, he was that visionary. I mean, I still, I refer to Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal as a spiritual father of the nation because Definitely. the way he's actually guided us all, uh, you know, from independence, before independence, and how he got Qaeda e Azam back into Muslim League as well is something which needs to be highly appreciated. And a lot of kids these days hmm. do not even know that, uh, that Muhammad uh, Jinnah Saab, the founder of Pakistan, the father of Pakistan, ladies and gentlemen, left Muslim League. And then it was Alama Muhammad Iqbal then who actually went to Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah and said, hey, you know what, you really need to come <laughs> back and it's only you who people will actually follow and it's only you who can achieve this as well. So it's wonderful. We have a few visuals with you, uh, <laughs> uh, with us uh, to share with you guys as well. So and you know, Shazad, just speaking of, uh, of course, our very favorite, the great poet, um, the philosopher aspect of his life, I'm, I'm in love with it. I mean, you read his work. And what really, really interests me in someone's life is actually the type of um, thinking they had, the mind that they possessed. I mean, it was back then, which is more than a century ago, almost now. I, I, I can still resonate with his words. It still yeah. makes sense. And I feel like it is timeless. His, not just his poetry, his prose, his writings, his, especially his philosophical writings. Exactly. And They're I always, timeless. you know, it's, it's, uh, you know this, this couplet has always been very close to my heart as well. Khudi ko kar but not just that, Shiza, you know, mm -hmm. the day is actually dawned with special prayers for solidarity and prosperity of the country right. and the Muslims as well. The nation pays special tribute for his vision of a separate homeland for Muslims of the subcontinent. Born on November 9th, 18th, 77th, Salko, Dr. Iqbal was a great representative of the subcontinent and one of the main exponents of the Pakistan movement called the Sufi poet of the modern age. He was a man of great ideas, dynamic, romantic, provocative, and profound. I wish I knew him, though. I mean, I feel like my soul actually does belong to that era as well. Yeah. You know, to be ahead of your time is one thing, but to be actually behind your time is one thing. I feel like you I know, belong um, to that you era. Know, what I feel uh, most proud about is that, you know, when you go to a few European countries where his work is over there in the libraries, people go, there are places named after Dr. Yes. Lama Muhammad Iqbal as well, all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, yes, obviously, he is the beacon of hope. He was that one person who wanted youngsters uh, to be kind of mentors to Bazurgs as well. And these days, this is something which we can see. Right. You know, ko peeron ka ustad kar is something which we see these days as well. And uh, so, sir, uh, may your soul rest in peace. And uh, whatever you've done for us, uh, you, Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jina, all of those people who are a part of that freedom movement as well, uh, uh, I guess you've done a wonderful job, which is why we are today over here progressing 
and making sure that you know we give everybody their due rights. Definitely, and uh, we really hope that we make you proud, especially in the name of the country that you fought for as well. Yeah. But Shazad, now coming back to well Ramadan and us observing Ramadan. Yeah. You know, just yesterday we were having a discussion of how different it was. Uh, well, kind of, let's say, before marriage and after marriage for the both of us uh, in terms of how Sari and Afsai traditions change. I feel like every uh, household... You can, you can leave me out of this, <laughs> but yeah. Yes, because I you're think staying... for, for women, it's very different. But generally speaking, as, I mean, because your siblings moved out as well, yeah, right? So it's yeah. not the same for yeah, you too. So um, I feel like there's a... <laughs> <laughs> There's a different special system for every single household as well. Yeah. Even if we were to talk about the details of what we used to do and you used to do, it would be so different and that is, is what uh, makes the tradition so unique. Yeah. Uh, remember before the month started, we spoke about we need to sort of take a look at how uh, aftars and especially sahur are observed all over the world in different yeah. parts of the country, uh, Muslim countries of course. Today we have to look at how it is actually observed in Pakistan. Let's start with that. Yeah. And, and before we do that, that, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that everybody can relate with this as well because, uh, you know, the pictures we see, you know, before Sahar uh, on internet are very different. They're very glamorous, very fashionable. Everybody's in their one look and, you know, they feel perfectly fine, divine, divinity, <laughs> all of that. But, uh, you know, if you get a chance one day, you know, the very moment you wake up for Sahar, please make sure that you open up your uh, <laughs> you know, front camera and take That's a look so at mean. yourself. It's so absurd to look at, you know, I do not even post stories on uh, you know, Sahri as well. But ladies and gentlemen, here's our uh, true rendition of how Sahar and Aftari takes place over here in Pakistan. Manur, uh, the person behind all of these reports, always does She's a wonderful amazing, job yes. as well. So please go. Let's take a look. And once you guys will come back, we'll talk about how to stay positive. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Let's Good do morning. It. According to Hadith, it is known that during Ramadan, the gates of heaven are opened while those of hell are closed. People who keep fast shall enter paradise through a gate called Babur Rayan. Sehri is the meal you eat before dawn, when you keep fast. There is a great reward for eating sehri. After sehri, as the call to Fajr prayer is made, you make the intention to keep fast. Choose what you eat in sehri very wisely. Since you stay without food and drink all day, make sure you consume water in good quantity. If you are addicted to caffeine, a cup of tea at sehri shall suffice you. Eat high energy foods at sehri. These include oats, milk, yogurt and whole grain varieties such as cereals. Do not consume food that causes bloating and constipation. Avoid foods that make you feel thirsty. Iftar is Arabic word which means to break. As the meaning suggests, it is the time of breaking the fast at the call of Maghrib prayer. It is very important time. Allah accepts the supplications made at iftar. You do not just eat food and break your fast. Rather, you feel grateful for Allah for His blessings. You take food and drink for granted. Sometimes you throw away leftover food or show disapproval towards home-cooked meals. But after experiencing hunger, you realize how important all of these Allah's blessings are. It is a hardening experience to lift your spirituality. After being without food and drink, you feel the pain of hunger that many people in the world feel on a daily basis. It makes you more compassionate towards the poor and needy. At iftar, it is advisable to consume natural sugars in the form of fruits and dates rather than artificial drinks. They cause bloating and you may feel uneasy after iftar. The best way to do iftar is by breaking your fast with a date, drink some water and eat something light, maybe a fruit, then offer maghrib prayer. By this time your stomach shall be prepared to intake food, then you can eat your iftar. However, be careful not to overeat as you may experience digestive problems making it difficult to offer tarawi prayer. Hence, make a very wise choice with regard to what you eat in sehri and iftar. That's true ladies and gentlemen, you really need to make a wise choice whether what you're going to eat in sehri and iftar and not just that. Uh, you know people over here, uh, because, uh, the report was wonderful, uh, Manu you did a great job as well but there was one more point and that is that people do not stop eating. And they kind of say, oh, you know what, abhi to azaan ho rahi hai. Abhi hmm. dunia mein kai to azaan ho rahi hai. They wait <laughs> for the <laughs> last <laughs> word of azaan to come out of the mall, Isma. <laughs> exactly. Does that happen at your place as well? Well, it, I mean, there are definitely certain times that I can clearly recall for mm -hmm. us siblings fighting over the fact that, okay, abhi azaan ho rahi and mom is like, you know what, the time is, you might as well not fast even now that you're still eating. We're like, oh, nahi, nahi, bas akhri second. And I feel like a lot of people wait to brush their teeth till the uh, end of azaan. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, that so shouldn't happen because I remember 
remember this was just two or three days back, um, our uh, religious scholar over here uh, told us that about 10-ish minutes before yeah. the um, azan is actually set out, you have to wrap up your sehri. Exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you know, next time, whenever you get up, <laughs> get up 10 minutes earlier. And the you know sole reason behind uh, you know, kind of <coughs> stopping eating is because of the fact that you can actually offer your tahajjud prayer as well and then get into fajr. That's wonderful. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, today as we said that we'll be talking about how to stay positive in these times full of stress or distress as well. What to do, how the support systems need to work, how everybody needs to come together. Because to be honest, I've seen a lot of people, you know, doing charity, you know, donations, making sure that, you know, there's a mosque in Mohalla and they're going to construct it for other people as well where there might be their siblings within their own family who might not have proper food to eat, mm. but they'll still be focusing on making a masjid or a mosque rather than donating or helping or extending a hand of help to their uh, probably brothers, sisters, parents, or anybody else for that matter. This is something we need to speak about today. So without any further ado, yes, let's you want to say it. something? No, I just wanted to say that let's definitely talk about it. And I feel like we have missed out on our, well, nap of the morning. So let's quickly do it as exactly. well. Exactly. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we're lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody whom we refer to as a, a young, handsome, smart man who <laughs> happens to be a motivational speaker. He's the kind of person you really want to be in conversation with because he's going to set your path straight, tell you where you might be wrong or what you really need to do with your life. He, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be Mr. Asim Nazir. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Subha bakhair. Good morning. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. And I'm very positive and very energetic seeing your energy and the way Thank you have you. transferred your energy. I'm very excited. Thank so positive, you so positive much. Positive will actually yes. lead us to negative, so let's not <laughs> do that. Let's not do that. I want you to today not. kind of take over us and you know, make us positive as well. Yeah. And everybody who's out there and alongside Mr. Asif Saab, ladies and gentlemen, one of my very dear friends, uh, very amazing Nath Khwa. <clears throat> and you know, he kind of travels from far away to come to the studio in the holy month of Ramadan as well. Muhammad Ali Raza Sultani Saab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum. How are you, my brother? Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. What are you doing today? कैसे समझे के तेरी शान जमाने वाले कैसे समझे के तेरी शान जमाने वाले खुद मिटेंगे वो तेरा नाम मिटाने वाले ओ खुद मिटेंगे खुद मिटेंगे वो तेरा नाम मिटाने वाले और क्या जरूरत है कि मैं चांद का जलवा देखूं जी क्या जरूरत है कि मैं चांद का जलवा देखूं ठहरो ठहरो के हैं वो जुल्फ हटाने वाले ओ ठहरो 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 के हैं वो जुल्फ हटाने वाले और जूं ही तैबा से मैं निकलूं तो कहें वो मुझसे जूं ही तैबा से मैं निकलूं तो कहें ये मुझसे कि लौट आओ ऐ मेरे शहर से 
जाने वाले तुम लौट आओ लौट आओ ऐ मेरे शहर से जाने वाले और इनमें जहरा भी है हैदर भी है हसने भी है इनमें जहरा भी है हैदर भी है हसने भी है तो कितने आला है मोहम्मद के गराने वाले तो खुद मिटेंगे वो तेरा नाम मिटाने वाले और दिल में दो जख्म का जरा खौफ नहीं है हाकिम और दिल में दो जख्म का जरा खौफ नहीं है हाकिम गए मुझे को जहनु से बचाने वाले भाई खुद मिटेंगे वो तेरा नाम मिटाने वाले that who who are having some amount of success okay if you give some money or the people who are having some amount of success to people equal amount of success mm-hmm. one would be highly excited and the second one might be very depressed and the other one might faint might faint are you yeah. talking about the, the people mindset? Yeah. yes okay so so you very rightly said that it is about the mindset mm. yeah. so when you have this kind of positive mindset the things go in a different way but when you are in a negative mindset the things are totally get out of control so the mindset is when you are in a in a mindset when you are enjoying mm-hmm. when you are relaxed when you have the inner peace inner calmness so this is what we call that we are moving towards the path of happiness now there are two approaches hmm. the one approach is that uh, we think that we have this uh, task in our life we set the goals and we try to achieve that yeah. goal okay. so when we achieve that goal we'll get a booster dose of positivity or happiness yeah. you call it yeah, mm-hmm. that's true and then we move to the next task yeah. Yeah. and we get another dose but what happens is over the, over the years we want to achieve more and more and we want to set very high objectives but the level of motivation and happiness goes down with the passage of time mm-hmm. and especially this is with those people who having very high and hefty goals in their life right. who set very high goals in their life they get more depressed in their life yeah. because they want to achieve something and they associate happiness with some sort of mm-hmm. destination to achieve their goals, to achieve their goals. Yeah, right. but uh, so i know she but but here she's I, yes. i would like to add the second yes. approach yes, yes. now the second approach is what this is the first approach yes. that you think that happiness is with some titles okay. yeah. with your fame when the program goes hit you are very happy yeah the second approach is that we as a human being we are very special okay we are unique right. we are created by 
you know, the mighty creator. Definitely. We are the prime product of Allah. Mm. So for that matter, we do not need anything from the outside to keep us right. happy. Wonderful. This Love is wonderful. Mm. So the happiness is the starting point of your life. Mm. And we need to understand that happiness is not the destination. Yeah. It's happiness a journey. is a journey. It's a journey. So when you associate with the destinations, you know, you, mm. you are spending 5 to 10% of the time being happy and the rest of the 90% of the time, True. you are right, nowhere. Right, right. And so especially when you do that, I feel like when you do achieve that goal, then you're done being happy, then what next? Because you're yes. done being happy. Yes. <laughs> so so I for a sh shorter mm. period of time, you're happy and then you move to the next task and mostly you are spending your time in curiosity and looking for the different things and want to do more and more and you forget about the happiness. Exactly. But Absolutely. you, when you feel that I'm... I'm the product right at this point of time. I'm very unique. I'm very special. And I deserve happiness. Yeah. Yeah. So if happiness is for the titles only, mm -hmm. so that would be quite unfair with those people who have no success in the life. They do not have the money. They do not have the titles. But Mr. Nazir, would you say the same thing if people were to associate their happiness with a person? Well, a lot of people do. Well, I people mean, can let you it's down only times yeah, well. that's ah, what I'm yes. it's only natural to sort of associate your happiness with the person. If that person mistreats you and your day is ruined, and it's only natural. I'm pretty sure everyone in the studio might. It has happened to you once or twice at least. She's a, it happens. Yeah. But but actually, is it uh, safe for the mind? <laughs> uh, no. Lisa, why are you no, smiling? No. no <laughs> I'm smiling because the fact that uh, if we understand happiness, yeah. happiness is not external. Okay, happiness does mm -hmm. not depend on the environment. Mm -hmm. Happiness does not depend on other people. Yeah. Right. So if you are setting your tone and mood based on your boss, based on your life partner, mm -hmm. yes, you get affected by those people, yeah. but again, you have to get back. Yeah, 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 true. If That's you actually, depend on external mm -hmm. environment, you know, the roads are blocked and there are, you know, the traffic jam and, you know, the mm -hmm. macro and the micro environment. <laughs> if you're dependent on these things, you true. cannot live in a happy life. So happiness is internal. Okay. It's your inner peace. It has absolutely nothing to do with the external environment. Yes, we get affected by it. But yes. again, we have to understand that it's all about your inner peace. Mm, I exactly. love this answer. That's true. And I, you know what? I believe that, you know, uh, this is something which I believe, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not important that everybody needs to believe in it as well. And that is that either you're born happy or either you're born sad. And <laughs> yes, there's a reason, 100%. Yeah, and, and there's a reason why I'm saying that. Because, you know, you look at different kids. You know, you, yeah. you look at a baby who's one year old. You know, look at three different babies of one year old. One, you will say, oh, la, la. You know, he's actually or she's going to give you a smile. One, you're going to say, ooh, la, la. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something like that. So what I want to come down to is that obviously we truly, so we have established that happiness needs to come from within. Yeah. You know, and you are the one responsible for it. But why is it that, you know, when we start to set goals and, uh, you know, so in life, obviously there's going to be, uh, you know, spikes as well. There's going to be downfall as well. But what really happens is that nobody's actually taught us that, you know, with, with every fall, you can still be happy. You know, the problem is that whenever, God forbid, unfortunately, a bad thing happens to you in your life, you know, the people be like, oh, yeah, you know, something like that. But, and, you know, this is one thing which once a Maimon uncle told me, and he was like, that, you know, why do you think that Maimons are so successful in a business? And I was like, uncle, why? So he said that, you know, ever since we start to grow up, you know, obviously, one, we go with our parents, you know, sit on our shops, you know, <laughs> look at business as a very closer insight, obviously. But he's like that, you know, that we are always taught that, you know, that loss is a part of business. So he's like, you know, once you guys are going to have a loss or face a loss, you're going to give up on the business. He's like, we continue because that's something which we have learned. So it's about teaching us. And nobody taught us that, you know, with every fall, you, you, you still can be happy. That yes. That man yes. taught us. But In okay. every <laughs> crisis, there is opportunity. Yeah. The bigger the crisis, the bigger the opportunity you get. Mm. Um, let's talk about this lockdown. Yeah. What happens? All the bigger brands. Population increases, yeah. Yeah, population increases. Positive, yeah, that's the positive in it. Yeah. <laughs> that's very positive, and especially for us having, you know, uh, by crore, 220 know, million right? population. Such a small and nation. <laughs> such a small nation, and with this much of growth, that's very positive. Uh -huh. uh, but what happens? Many people in this lockdown, the big brands, if you talk about, they get hit by this lockdown, and yeah. their, you know, the sales, their prof profitability uh, got down tremendously. But within the same scenario, the few people, they, you know, they perform very well. Yeah. 
they started their uh, you know, new startups, new business. Hmm. They came up with an innovative approach, and now they're making the money. Hmm. So all it depends that how you behave in that particular situation. With a positive mindset, you can come up with very different ideas. Yeah. Okay. But when it comes, when you are thinking negative in any particular situation, when you think that it's it's you know uh, it's a lockdown situation, it's a pandemic situation, I cannot do anything. Kujo ini sakda. Kujo ini sakda. Then you cannot do. Then you cannot do anything. Now, if we talk about the happiness, uh, let me share with you a recent uh, study conducted by Harvard Business School and that was very interesting. What did it say? Positive and negative. Would you like to listen positive sure, or sure, negative? Positive, positive. 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 But, but I will talk negative first. Sure. Oh, okay, I, okay. And negative is that, that human mind is negatively biased. So what is that negatively biased? We have this tendency and propensity to move towards the negative things much faster than towards the positive things. Oh, so we just covered. Just covered. Okay. And similarly, <laughs> what happens? And and what happens is that when you are successful, yeah. you are not thinking about how to multiply your success. You are more towards the negative. How to retain that? Exactly. And That's I, true. Uh, That's yes. I have a very similar question to that, and mm -hmm. that is that you know, and this is something I've been I've been through myself as well, and I want to put it out as well because a lot of people do not even talk about it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that you know, Alhamdulillah, you're living a smooth life. Yeah. You drive a good car. You wear good clothes. Your kids go to good school. You know, you have a roof. You have people at home who's going to help mm -hmm. you. So eventually, there comes a time when you start to get scared. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, you yes. know. And, and, and you know, so one day I, I was driving like this and I was like, man, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Mia, I'm so thankful and all of that. It's wonderful. And then I gradually came to a point where I was like, you know, I haven't been ill in, in so long. You know, everything's uh, going smooth. Yes. I'm thanking Allah Almighty. I hope there's nothing worse <laughs> coming towards me. I know. And you know, the very moment you start thinking, the next day you come, you come across the something. news where it's like, oh I my think God, you man. It. Yeah, you <laughs> jinxed it as well. So how do we prepare ourselves for happiness? Where we really do not come across a thought, ke, yaar, itne se se sab, you know, everything is smooth. Mm -hmm. You know, God forbid if something goes wrong, what am I going to do? So how do we prepare ourselves to be happy? Yeah, the thought that maybe we don't deserve this. How come we're so happy? We can't accept it, right? Actually, we do. The, the point is that we do not understand this phenomenon of happiness. We okay. do not have the awareness because, again, I would say that we associate happiness with the things, hmm. with the car, with the house. Obviously, if I'm not getting ill, you know, every, everything's going <laughs> smooth, I'll be that happy. That is the blessing of Almighty. Yes, obviously. That is blessing of Almighty. <laughs> say thanks to Almighty <laughs> every day, every time. Hmm. Means, but this is what we, we call it, uh, that mind is negative and biased. Now, uh, let me give you another example that hmm. if you have any upload on the Facebook or anywhere, so you get... 100 positive comments yeah. and one negative. Yeah. You forget about those 100 and it's you'll really think about really. that, who this person is. It <laughs> took me a longer period of time to ignore those. Ignore messages. those, <laughs> yes. because mind is that. So now if we talk about this, uh, the positive aspect of that study, and that is the answer of your question, that we have to learn this. Yeah. Hmm. It's a skill we have to learn. And how we can learn this skill of being positive and happy in the life is that if you sit in a room and ask yourself that, I'm, I'm very positive and I'm going to count my breathing for five minutes. You can't do that. Okay. You have to change your physiology okay. in order to change your Mentality. mindset. Mm. And for that matter, you have to engage yourself in a routine, okay. in a practice. And what is that routine? Mm. The first very important thing is that when you get up, mm. if you get up early in the morning, do this experiment experiment if you get up Sunday 11 12 you'll be lazy you Sunday. have body aches so much of yeah. and I mean you, you're totally disoriented but <laughs> if you get up early in the morning yeah. go for you know hiking Ajo. Ajo. <laughs> your mood is entirely different yeah. so this early morning it gives you a kick yeah. right for That's that particular true, day so this is one one of the trick now the second important thing is doing exercise yeah. go for 30 minutes and the people that usually say, I do not have time. So if you do not have mm -hmm. time for yeah. yourself in your life, who no are you giving your yeah. time to? Please but don't Mr. come and, and complain. You know, please don't do that. If you do not have time for yourself, Ooh, don't what come are you even doing? and tell us that you know that you are sad. Please don't yes. do that. No, so definitely. let me add for two, two course, thing, things more. So uh, what happens when you when you do exercise, your body releases hormones, endorphin. Mm. Yep. So that keeps you excited. So now we are talking about those things which can keep you excited. Okay. Now the people are spending millions of dollars on meditation all over the world. Yes. You see? Yes. They're meditating. So what is that meditation? What is that? 
namaz is that meditation alhamdulillah that is true yes so if we so why can why do we have to spend millions of dollars to to, to go yes, to thailand because you have to understand oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, still yeah. people are spending you know people are attending the online session of ikar toli and anthony <laughs> robin you know so robin uh, sharma your, robin sharma yes <laughs> yes who sold his ferrari <laughs> so so the point is that if we offer our five prayers now it is wonderful alhamdulillah with 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 the pure concentration if you offer five prayers a day nothing is better than that that is going to keep your mind in a training in a practice where where you can control your negative thoughts yeah. it is such a wonderful thing and that's how you can the positivity we are talking about mm. if you know the art of removing negative thoughts wow. which are like the terrorist in the town yeah, that yeah, is yeah. true so when mm. any negative thoughts enter in your mind and the negative thoughts can enter from the media the negative anywhere. and anywhere so we have to replace that negative thought with the positive true because sooner or later we will have to act on that negative thought that and when be acting so that would be destructive so meditation and meditation is what prayers it is Prayer your prayer prayers, so so the point is in one liner <laughs> the point is that you can change your mindset by changing your routine physiology yeah. you're okay. changing your routine indulging in positive habits that's how you can remain positive and an example is that the way shahzad came very positive <laughs> suddenly we get excited everybody got positive yes his energy yeah? is mashallah contagious but you know what uh, mr nasir <clears throat> i i wouldn't want to say i want to argue here but there is definitely a um, in op flip uh, side to the coin as well over here yeah. just this few days back i was in a conversation with someone and we were talking about mentality and the environment and we were discussing if dalai lama were to come to rawalpindi and kacheri <laughs> chowk he would lose his calm and he would be actually having a road rage that you know like we yeah, do yeah, yeah. but here again now let's talk about mentality one very important thing that uh, we were talking about earlier how a mentality of positivity or negativity is actually set from childhood yeah. small example now you have to tell me if it is the right approach or not because i was so confused so my niece was staying with us for a little while and she wasn't eating uh, eating anything so i bribed her sort of in a way that i made boiled eggs gave some to my husband gave some to my niece they were playing they were friends whatever you were bribing your husband i mean the just to make eggs. my niece eat right and then i was like whoever wins well, will get a prize it yes. was relatable for her that okay everybody's eating i should right. eat right so whoever yeah. wins they'll get a prize blah 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 yeah. so of course she couldn't finish her eggs they were too much for her she's so tiny 4 to 5 years and then we sh she didn't finish and i asked her amal you lost you know fakhir mamu won and you know what she said she said not everyone can be a winner she's a khala i want to be a loser in this game <laughs> and i was shocked i was i was questioning my sister's upbringing i was like i don't know if this is the right mindset or not this is the right mindset <laughs> is it yeah 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 this yeah. is my question to you so this is negatively biased that yeah. the mind is <laughs> negatively biased at any point of time means even for the she's kids she's so young to think yes, like this yes they think that way so that's how you need to train them that's how you need to train them and positivity one thing if you ask me one thing how you can change that is is uh, with your environment but i see it from a very different angle you see yeah. uh, because half of the time what happens over here is that you know people rather than coming up to you and you know saying it straight onto your face would make sentences and different <laughs> words you know so to kind yeah. of get you pumped Of course, you have to decode yeah, so those. Yeah, you know, in reaction, you do what they want you to do. Uh -huh. So I think that the kid does did a wonderful <laughs> job because <laughs> she so didn't really, uh, you know, she didn't really ate the eggs, and and then she was like, hey, you know, not everybody needs to win every day. <laughs> so you were not able to get her that pump which our parents used to get us. That yeah, I, you know, I think oh, my way was. Jayga. Oh, you know, he's going, he's going to win. She's going to win, and all yeah. of that, and you know, skin number they go. And ever since we were growing up, I think that we we fought with this kind of. dilemma in our life as well where you know every time our parents were like oh phoppo ke bete ko dekho kitne number aaye you know see somebody hmm. else and you know i think that. that was the wrong approach i think i end. think that she actually did a wonderful job and you know if we were taught uh, in that age ki you just baat hi nahi hona i think we would have done some wonderful <laughs> job as well actually shahzad what happens is that when we talk about these principles mm -hmm. and when we try to implement these principles in our community in our country where there are so many problems we we have so much of you know the things going on at a time so we have no values and you know right now and there are so many things we, when we apply those principles in our society you know we look nowhere hmm. actually things get you know irrelevant sounds ir true. irrelevant but the point is that the principles remain the same whether it's whether in you, you are in united states okay. or, or in pakistan yes sooner or later you'll get the results 
Yeah. You principles have to keep of ethics on, you're saying? Yes, okay. principle of living we are okay. saying, ethics we are, we are talking about, okay. character we are talking about, it r would remain the same. Yeah. Now you see, take the example of our prophet, peace be upon him. What happened? Yes. Throughout his life, you know, the people, he they were actually positive. denied. Yeah. Yes, he stayed positive throughout his life because he had no option. He could not think po uh, negatively. I mean, he had a lot of options, he, but you know, he, but he, he kept to, himself yes, positive. Definitely. Yes, he kept himself. So without being positive, you do not have any option. Now the point is that how to stay positive. It's true. That's the point. That how to stay positive. So let's conclude it with let's that. Let's hmm. conclude it with this, that the best way to keep yourself positive is living in the company of the positive people. So if you have the positive people around, you'll be positive sooner or later, yeah. even if you're negative. But if you're in the company of the negative people who are always talking about the boss, who are negative about Pickering the company, and just all, all the time, you know, so you, you can't stay you know, positive. And let me say at the end and share uh, one of the largest study conducted by Harvard Business School. It was from 1938 to 2012, yeah. okay. more than 80 years of study. 700 people were, you know, um, uh, were followed in their life. The few became the CEO of the different companies, the head of stage, and the few bankrupt, and you know, the few did suicide. Oh, okay. More well, than what 80 did years. What the study find? I'm so curious. The finding of the study is that the happiness is where, where you find happiness. Where? They actually track the life, 70, 80 years, life of those people, 700 people. One point, it was not the money. Shazad, it was not the money. Okay. okay. It was not fortunate. I get that. I truly <laughs> believe in it. It was not, yeah. you know, fortunate. It was not anything. It was in relationship. Those oh. people who were socially active, they were having good friends. And the quality, really, it's about the quality. quality it's not definitely. about the number of relations. True. It's about the quality relation. So those people who had quality relation, not toxic relation, hmm. quality relationship in their life, they were very happy and they were very healthy in their, in their life based on 80 years of that study. So wow. have that positive and, you know, positive people around, spend your time weekly, at least two to three hours with, with the friends, uh -huh. genuine, true, and loyal friends. What if you don't And if you, if, you ref, if you reflect back, find those. If you reflect back that time, when we were not having the resources, uh -huh. we were not having that much money, but we were, were having, you know, the loyal friends right, with us. Yeah, yeah. And we were so happy. We were enjoying like anything. Jani, and now Jani, we have got, Jani. yeah, Jani. <laughs> and now we have everything, mashallah. Hmm. But we do not have that feel. And we do not even hmm. have that time now. Yeah. We, we know, do not have so the time. Captivated. But we have to find out the time. Yeah, we have to make time. We That's have to true. make time. Otherwise, it's very difficult. You know, it's easy to talk about the happiness. But we have to practice these principles. And inshallah, you'll be happy. Exactly. That's wonderful, Asisa. Thank you very much for such amazing uh, talk. And I believe that you've hit the nail on the head. And, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I can give you an example. Alhamdulillah, shukran alhamdulillah. Because our father has always made sure of our parents that every Sunday, you know, all siblings are going to get together for a brunch. Wonderful, you know, yes. And uh, that too at our parents' place. So we sit down, you know, for hours and hours, have conversations, and you know, it kind of really lifts your mood as yeah. well. So, you know, it's for sort all of those festivity. people who are out there, yeah. yeah, I believe that this is something which really needs to be done. Asif Saab has actually told us and shared it with all our audiences out there that it's always happiness is always within a relationship, ladies and gentlemen. That can be with your mother, father, siblings, you know, wife, kids, anybody else for that matter. So please make sure that you have quality friends. But thank you very much, Asif Saab, well, for joining thank us. Thank you very much for the conversation. Last but not the least, सुनिए आपने बात वो कह रहे हैं कि रिश्तों में खुशी हैं, रिश्तों में, रिश्तों में खुशी हैं और रिश्ते जरूरी नहीं बहुत ज़्यादा हो, एक रिश्ता भी हो उसमें भी खुशी मिल सकती है, अब जाते-जाते आपसे नाच सुनना चाहते हैं। حضور سنتے ہیں سب دعائیں حضور سنتے ہیں التجائیں اور ہم ذرا بھی اگر دعا کے لیے ہم ذرا بھی اگر دعا کے لیے لب ہلائیں حضور سنتے ہیں لب ہلائیں حضور سنتے ہیں 
सब दुआए और गम के मारे न करे कोई जी गम के मारे न करे कोई मुस्कुराए हुजूर सुनते हैं मुस्कुराए हुजूर सुनते हैं इल्तिजाए हुजूर सुनते हैं सब दुआएं 